The transmission company of Nigeria has said that a total of 4,430.30 megawatts of power was transmitted through the national grid as of August to the 19th of 2020, as the country currently seeks to overhaul its power industry. A statement by the power firm stated that the figure is the highest ever recorded in the nation's power sector, surpassing the 5,377.8 megawatts peak reached on August the 1st. It attributed the newest feat to the keen interest of the federal government and the several programs and projects aimed at growing the power sector. The TCN maintained that it is working to stabilize, rehabilitate and expand the country's grid while urging Nigerians to support the efforts of the government by ensuring that electricity installations nationwide are secure. Meanwhile, the power deal between the federal government, its German counterparts and Siemens AG will see to the upgrading of 105 power sub substations, the construction of 70 new ones and the manufacturing of 3,765 new power transformers. Joining us live to make sense of all of this is Afolabi Akinrogunde, who is a power sector expert. Good to have you, Mr. Akinrogunde. Good to be here. Thank you. All right. It's this worth some form of commendation and knowing where we are coming from. Yes, this is still a far cry mm. uh, from achieving uninterrupted uh, power supply. What do you say? Yes, um, it's very, very encouraging news from coming from the TCN. Um, very, very encouraging in indeed. Um, the key, I think um, this is the highest we've had in a very, very long, long time. Um, if I recall, the transmission capacity we have in Nigeria is about 5 gigawatts. So if they're doing 5.4 gigawatts, that means that they're really, really sweating that asset and they're making it perform optimally. Um, hopefully, pending when we start to see the dividends from the Siemens deal start mm. to show themselves within the transmission and um, infrastructure. Um, mm. I think the core thing really is going to be the clarification I would just like to, to just get, probably which wasn't um, shown from the, from the, from the story. Um, is basically what kind of upgrades or improvements were made to the infrastructure to enable us get this this uh, this this number? Because mm. even the five gigawatts capacity we have, effective capacity we have, we've been doing two point two point something, three point something, averaging even like three gigawatts for for quite a long time. So it would be interesting to know what bottlenecks have been resolved. To enable us get these numbers you know, at this at this higher higher level, but but for now we will not look a gift us in the mouth. We will say thank you very much. <laughs> All right, but how can we achieve upward trend? Because you know, uh, occasionally we encounter drop to as low as two thousand uh, megawatts. How do we sustain this um, um, yeah. uh, trend moving forward? Yeah, I think um, the first thing really is to. First of all, I think if you look at the very, very first step, is to first of all, is to first of all build or, re or repair or replace the infrastructure. The infrastructure we have is very, very old. It's very, it's very, it's very, it's, it's not what a country should be having in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And then, secondly, we then have to because right now we we've got about I think totally about 13 gigawatts to total power power capacity within, within Nigeria. We should be having at least 100 gigawatts. So, so let's not even go there. Let's even start from where, where we are now. What we have within Nigeria, what can we do to build, replace, or repair what we have in place now? And then we then have to now ask, ask ourselves a question. The model we actually have now, let's leave what is in place. The model we have now, which is like almost like a centralized grid system, how do we then design another model probably beside that model that can then be working to also give power supply to other parts of the country to other parts of the country which don't have uh, grid access but which are under grid at the moment. So do we this another model which is outside of this model which can work to serve the various areas. For example, we have and we have you know, a lot of people thinking about that within the 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 the, the sector now. For example, what was thought about the eligible customer uh, provisions by the federal government and a few other things and uh, and a few other thoughts, i.e. capacity power and all of that. So how can we design a system outside of that, of that system which will work alongside the grid that we have. And then, and then I think thirdly, most importantly, for the grid that we have, how can we now ensure that this grid doesn't come back to the state it is in in another 10 or, or 15 years' time? Mm. So I, what is the commercial structure for even ensuring that this grid is able to continue maintaining itself, to continue operating itself? Do we look for a technical partner to, to hand it over to and work it? Because it's obvious that the government 
as is right now doesn't is not in business to 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 do to do business. Mm -hmm. So do we hand it over to to somebody? I know that the government doesn't want to hand over you no know, sensitive transmission infrastructure to to a third party, but I think these are some of the things we need to start thinking about mm -hmm. as a country and start and start asking ourselves: Okay, who do we? How do we handle this infrastructure so that it doesn't get it doesn't get decayed? and destroyed in the manner it was over the last time, um, 40, 50 years again. Now we're not looking for another Siemens deal in another 20 years time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many questions. I obviously don't have the answers, but I'm, I'm wondering and imagining, uh, is it even possible to achieve, say, 20,000 or 30,000 to take care of both industrial and domestic use of power? Shall we ever get to that point? And uh, what would it take to get to that point? Is, or is that just being over ambitious? Um, my, my own, my own, my, my own, my own, my own belief is really that um, with the model we have now, we really, really have to retweak or redesign the model we have now. If you want to achieve 20, 20 gigawatts or 20 or 20,000 megawatts, as, as you prefer to, to call it, mm. um, um, stable, stable power supply within Nigeria. The current model we have now will have to be significantly rejected uh, because as it is now, it is not working. Various elements of that, of, of that value chain. Uh, and not, are not working as they should and need to be seriously rejected and, and, and reviewed. And it's also, it's also clear, I think there have been various studies out there. Some are saying we need $40 billion, some are saying we need $35 billion, some are saying we need $20, $50 billion, depending on who you look at and what models they adopt, mm -hmm. to bring the grid up to at least you know, um, um, uh, 13, 15, 15, 15, 15 gigawatts. So, so, so it's actually a lot of money. And I don't think the government has that money mm. to actually pump into this. And the other challenge you have is that once you have 20 gigawatts in play, then you have a situation where the person that was using fan before now feels comfortable to use a generator or now feels comfortable to, to, to use an AD. And then they now, and then you, your power numbers continue to go. But really, to get to that point with the, with the model we have right now, with the, with the infrastructure we have right now, I think it needs to be seriously rejected to, to mm. get to 20 gigawatt. All right. And, and I want to just check with you. You know, earlier you mentioned that the governments will not want to hand over sensitive projects to third party. But if that's what we really do need, shouldn't we be having uh, such conversations? Yes, it's, um, it's, those are the kind of conversations we need. Um, however, I think it's going to be, it, it, at, at the end of the day, it's going to have to be, um, it's going to, to have to, to be you, you having a, have, having a structured, a structured thinking around it and also determining what your trade-offs are because there's always a trade-off in everything in life. Mm. You're trading off what you perceive to be your security vis-a-vis -vis getting more power, getting more stability, getting more economic growth. So I think it's good as actually having to, to sit down and say, okay, what can I trade off? How can I manage this? What are the risks involved? How do I manage do those risks and manage to ensure that at least I'm not trading away my, my everything I have for this? But the question also remains that even now that, even now I think a friend of mine will also will always ask me, what you are even keeping? What have you benefited from it so mm -hmm. far? The, the 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 security you said you want to have for from from infrastructure, but really, but how are we managing? So I think it's going to be, a, but it's, but it's all, it is still a serious consideration, and the government will still have to sit down and say, okay, how, how can we structure this? How can we manage it? How can we handle our concerns and still create a commercially viable solution that makes sense for the operators? makes sense for the government from a security and sustainability perspective right. and makes sense for the final user at the end of the day. Mm. Power sector, Afolabi Akinro Gunde, thank you so very much for your contributions thank and you. keep safe out there.